sure on the other view are just people are interested sa topic na yan. And this will be, of course, look uh, in a biblical way. And uh, alam natin na ang love has been uh, many times uh, misunderstood or misused and even abused by many. Kaya ako mahalaga na makapunan uh, yung mga uh, young people natin dito. And uh, at the same time, you can of course uh, bring along with you ang inyong uh, fiancé or uh, boyfriend or girlfriend uh, para makilala mo natin. <laughs> okay. Sa amin mo sa CCM board ay uh, every time na uh, yung mga anak ko namin o anak ng mga pastors ay nagpapakilala ng kanilang mga boyfriend or girlfriend or fiancé sa CCM pastors, nilanok ko namin. Sinasabi namin na sinasabi namin na kinakailangan dumaan sa uh, matinding pagsasuri. Kinakailangan i-check yung uh, theology, yung fundamentals sa kanyang understanding ng gospel. Uh, so, and so, but of course, they just say that jokingly. Pero syempre, mahalaga rin talaga na yung ating uh, mga anak ay we make sure na yung kanina kong magiging uh, katuwang sa buhay or partner in life later on ay mga Christians talaga nakapitinaga sa Panginoon. And uh, we do hope na this uh, interfellowship this coming Sunday will be of great help para sa mga young adults na nagahanap o nagpe-pray na kanilang magiging you know, lifetime partner sa kanilang buhay. Okay. So, wag mo tayong mag-invite ng mga elementary or pinakailangan uh, wala pa o sinisip nila yan. Ano? Baka mamaya pagka pumunta sila rito ay magkano sila ng uh, plano na sila ay uh, mag-date sa Valley Times Day. <laughs> So yun ho muna mga nasa married kids o mga nasa colleges ano, pwede yun silang uh, tumatid. Okay, so tayo ay nagtutuloy sa nagpapatuloy sa ating pag-aaral sa Aklat ng Roma. Ngayong umaga, tatalakayin mo natin ang Romans 9 verses 19 hanggang 24. Romans 9, 19 to 24. At ito ko ay aking pinamagatang the freedom of the father to choose. Simulan po natin uh, isahin ang bawat verses. Simulan sa verse 19. You will say to me then, why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? But who are you, O man, to answer back to God? Will what is molded say to its molder, Why have you made me like this? Has the pattern no right over the clay to make out of the same lamp one vessel for honorable use and another for dishonorable use? What if God, desiring to show his wrath, and to make known his power, has endured with much patience vessels of wrath prepared for destruction, in order to make known the riches of his glory for vessels of mercy, which he has prepared beforehand for glory, even us whom he has called, not from the Jews only, but also from the Gentiles. So these are the verses, brethren, that we will be studying this morning. At bago ko natin gawin yan, sama-sama ko tayong munalangin. Mga pangyarihan, pakilang Diyos, kayo na siyang may sandarenya sa bawat buhay at bawat binalang at bawat pangyayari ng mundo at ng buhay ng inyong mga anak. Kami, O Diyos, ay 
lumalapit sa inyo. Nagpapakumbaba at hinihiling namin na ang aming mga puso ay muli niyo pong ihanda. Lalo na Panginoon sa mga talata nito na maaring marami sa amin ang nahirapang maunawaan. Hindi naman, di naman kaya ay mahirap tanggapin bilang pagtuhan. We pray Lord God that your word might just continue to Lord humble us and help us Lord to to understand your rightful place in the universe and over our lives. Nang sa kayo, Panginoon, kayo lamang ang siyang mabigyan namin ng pinakmataas na pagganang reverence that you alone are worthy to receive from your creatures and for us whom we have saved. Kayo, Panginoon, ang siyang maluwalhati for all these times that we will study your word. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, sa lahat ng iyong gagawin at dahil po dito ay amin lamang maingat na hindi na balik ang lahat ng papurit pagsamba sa lahat ng Tumesis. Amen. At amen. Sa patuloy mo nating pag, uh, pagsisid ng malalim sa malawak na karagatan ng Romans chapter 9, na siyang tinuturo ang sabarenya ng Diyos. At mas lalo ho natin makilala ng mas malalim pa kung sino ang Panginoon. Kaya ako sa mga passage na ito, we can see na itinuturo na ang Diyos is the Father. At lahat ho ng tao is represented sa tinatawag mo ni Paul na common lump of clay. At mula mo sa clay na ito, ang Diyos ho, sa kanyang sabirenya ay umilit na ang mga iba ay maging vessels of honor at yung mga iba naman ay maging vessels of dishonor. Kaya ho itong analogy na ito ay tunay na nagre-represent sa Diyos bilang pattern, bilang manlilikha na pwede niyang gawin sa anumang kagustuhan niya doon sa clay. And he can do whatever he wants doon sa clay na yun. Hindi yung siya accountable sa clay na kanyang gagawin. Nasa kanya kung anong uh, forma, kung anong itsura, kung anong hugis na gagawin niya sa mga clay na kanyang nilikha. Kaya ho, ang ganda ng sinabi yun ni Steve Lawson, if we look into the next slide, ang sabi ho niya, it is very appropriate that all of mankind is pictured as clay. One lump of clay. Because clay is dirty, clay is filthy, clay is marred, it is filled with many flaws. And that is what humanity is in its total depravity. Because of the fall of Adam, the entire human race has been plunged into sin. And so the analogy of clay is very appropriate. The contrast is very stark and is very vivid. Makikita ko natin what the Bible teaches and this is what the text teaches ano ko? sa mga oras na ito. Kaya ho, tignan natin ngayon yung ating passage. Let's walk through our passage brethren so that we, in our minds, might be able to put God in His rightful place. Sa kanyang tamang kalalagayan. Kung saan siya dapat nandun. Because many times, dahil po sa you know, prideful arrogance sa tao, and the limitations of our understanding towards God ay hindi mo natin na ilalagay sa tamang pwesto ang Diyos sa ating eksipan. Kaya uh, moving on in the next slide, dito ho, ang Diyos ho ay gumagawa 
ng dalawang uri ng besen. Yung una ho, one is honorable, at yung isa naman po, dishonorable. At sa makikita mo natin ngayong umaga, the honorable would be like today, a fine piece of china, a beautiful vase, and the dishonorable will be like a toilet, will be like a privy, will be like a trash can to hold refuse and to take out of the house and to dump behind the house. Kaya ho, yung question na ina-anticipate dito ho ni Pablo sa Romans 9, 19, ay pwede ho natin ma-paraphrase ang ganito, no? If God has mercy on whom He desires, and then He hardens whom He desires, sa ngayon sa verse 18, hindi pa rin mga robots na pala tayo. Wala pala tayong wala pa tayong free will to choose or reject God. Kung wala tayong free will either to choose or reject ang Diyos, then how can He rightly judge us? Since we are just acting as He programmed us to act. Now, kung gano'n mo yung katanungan, parang magiging madali lang kay Pablo na sagutin ito. And yung kanyang uh, reply would probably be like this. No? Something along these lines. Pwede niyong sabihin na, well, hindi ko naman ibig sabihin na ang mga tao ay hindi nila pwedeng i-resist ang will ng Diyos. Because that would deny yung kanilang free will. But what I meant was, no, if Paul was, if we think that Paul would answer this way, that God would have mercy on whoever He foreknew na alam niyang maniniwala sa Kanya later on o magtitiwala sa Kanya later on. At ganun din, patitigasin niya ang puso ng alam niya na in the future ay tatanggi o magre-reject sa kanyang offer of salvation in the person of His Son, Jesus Christ. Ngunit, hindi ganoon ang sagot ni Pablo. Kaya ho yung kanyang sagot ay magpapakita ngayon na Paul is teaching that God has the sovereign right na i-display ang kanyang kapangyarihan at ang kanyang pangalan ay maipahayag sa buong sanlibutan. Kaya nangyari nga ho yan. You remember last week, tignan ho natin yung kanyang, ano, yung kanyang pagpapakita ng kanyang glory at ng kanyang power at ng kanyang galit in what? In his dealing with Pharaoh. Nung kanyang hinustahan si Pharaoh at ang kanyang mga sinasakupan. We saw that in Romans chapter 9 verse 17 nasabi yan, For the scripture says to Pharaoh, For this very purpose I have raised you up that I might show my power in you and that my name may be proclaimed in all the earth. So, maliwanag mo rin. Pinakita, dinisplay ng Panginoon Diyos yung kayamanan ng kanyang kalawang hatian. At yung pangalawang halimbawa na ating nakita at tinignan nung nakarang linggo ay yung kanyang kalayaan na mahalin si Hakob at piliin siya magpakita ng awa kay Hakob at hindi magpakita ng awa at hindi, ang, hindi niya pinili yung kanyang kakamba na kapatid na panganay na si Iso. At syempre, pinakita niya yung kanyang mercy rin kay Moses. And in fact, yung kanyang glory, the glimpse of His glory in the life of Moses. Kaya ho, as we look into our outline, ito ho yung unang makikita natin bilang sagot ni, ni Pablo. He was, of course, anticipating uh, a refusal or what we can call yung parang pala rebelde sa isip 
ng kanyang mga mambabasa. Uh, by the way, hindi ho uh, hindi ho prangi si Pablo na parang iniisip niya na gano'n ang iniisip ng mga taong nagbabasa, pero hindi naman pala yung nangyayari o hindi naman pala yung mangyayari. And we can see that history proves that Paul was right because whenever people would hear a message like this or whenever people would read Romans chapter 9 nakakaroon mo ng tinatawag na refusal yun mo yung unang bagay na ating makikita nakakaroon po ng, ng rebellion sa kanilang isip na para sa kanila hindi katanggap-tanggap yung ganitong ugali ng Diyos hindi katanggap-tanggap yung ganitong pagtili ng Panginoon na meron siyang pinili at meron siyang hindi pinili. Meron siyang tinanggap at meron siyang tinanggihan. Hindi ka tanggap-tanggap sa maraming mga tao. At minsan, ang, ang common problem mo ay ganito. Dahil, ang mga Kristiyano ko, we may, many times we operate only with our minds and our own opinions na hindi ho natin pinag-aaralan ng mabuti ang Biblia. Nagbabasa ho tayo, tama, pero binabasa ho natin ang mabilis. Binabasa ho natin ang just casually. Binabasa ho ng mga Christian na parang ano lang ho, parang nagbabasa lang sila ng uh, any kind of magazine. You know, it's like uh, pag nakaskay ka sa aeroplano, Parang halimbawa, nung kagagaling pa lang sa Kagayan de Oro, we had a, a, a meeting there with the leaders ng Karisteos. And di ba doon sa harapan po ng, ng inyong upuan, ay meron po rin mga pwedeng basahin ng mga magazines. Or even yung mga, mga safety, uh, yung kanilang yun, mga safety rules doon. And for many people, they just read it, just like me. Binabasa lang naman natin na mabilisan, ano, casually, walang masyadong, hindi niyo pinagbubulay-bulayan. <laughs> yung mga babasahin niyo doon ito. Ganon din po ang magiging treatment ng karamihan pagka ho binubuksan nila ang video. At kapag meron silang mga nadadaanan ng mga passages sa Bible na nahirapan silang maarok, binibitawan mo nila. Or they pass over it. They, they ignore it. Kung babasahin mo nila dahil sa na, na, sila ay nakakonsensya dahil pinakailangan basahin ito dahil nakalagay dyan read through the Bible for one year. So dadaan na lang minut mo nila ng pagkabilis. Bilis. So, ibig sabihin, hindi ko talaga nilang maintindihan. Because you are not able to ponder on it, or to meditate on it, to think over it many times over. And most especially, when you go through these passages. And then, what do people do? Kahit hindi nila pinag-aralan mabuti, binasa-basa lang, then then, they make their own conclusion. They make their own, they invent their own theology. And they make 40 maling mga interpretations sa Biblia. Based on their human biases and their own probably culture and upbringing in the church. Without really being diligent and serious students of God's word. Ako ho, nung ako ay bago pa lang na Kristiyano, I am really having a hard time understanding itong mga verses na ito. It, and even when I was maturing as a Christian, hindi ko ho matanggap yung sinasabi rin. And I had to review and reread and restudy over and over again and to even listen to some uh, theologians and Bible scholars and pastors and to bring them all together 
and to pray to the Lord and to again read these things ng paulit-ulit hanggang sa makita ko na well, I am actually not resisting those who are teaching. If I don't believe this, I am actually refusing and rejecting the very teaching of God's Word. And thus, I am not fighting against man. I am fighting against the perfect wisdom of God. At yun ho yung nakakatakot. And that's why sinabi rito sa verse 19, You will say to me then, Why does he still find fault? For who can resist his will? So sinakap mo na yung verse 18 para makuha natin yung pinaka-closest context ng verse 19. Wherein sinasabi sa verse 18, So then, He has mercy on whomever He wills, and He hardens whomever He wills. And then sinabi nga yan, He will say to me then, Why does He still find fault for who can resist His will? So, in the next slide, yung question na ito ni Paul, restated, is, if God shows mercy to some, and He hardens whomever He wills, regardless of their merit, or of their effort, or their choice, then how can God possibly assign blame to people for their choices? So the, the rebellion, brethren, is not to think the question. Hindi mo masama magtanong. You know, when people come up to you and ask things about uh, scriptures that somehow puzzles them or confuses them, hindi mo sinasabi na, ah, nag-rebel ka sa Diyos. Ah, hindi ka sumusunod sa Diyos. No, hindi mo eh. It is actually in the tone of the question. It is in rather how the question is being, ano, being raised up. It is not the spirit that you can discern. Kaya, the rebellion is not to think the question. Ang problema mo rito ay yung arrogance behind the question that Paul will sharply respond to in the next, in the next verse. Kaya kung yung next verse mo yan, in the next slide, verse 20, we can now see here, brethren, the reprimand ni Paul. Or, the synonym is the rebuke of Paul. Ang sagot mo ni Paul sa verse 20, On the contrary, who are you, O oh man? So, meron mo kasi yung stubbornness doon sa imaginary questioner. Remember, Paul was writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit knows every thoughts of men, every intent of the heart. So, this is not just Paul trying to be praning na nag-iisip ng masama sa, sa mga tao. So, this is God speaking through Paul, knowing exactly and perfectly what is going on in the minds of people. That whenever they would come across this verses, brethren, this will be the very same problems that they will have in their hearts. The arrogance, the stubbornness. Kaya sabi niya, Who are you, O man, who answers back to God? And this is more than just asking God, ano? Yung, yung objection ko rito ay irreverent. Yung objection ko ng tao ay it is a foolish objection. And it is come to a point of being blasphemous. Na walang karandangan na ina-accuse dito ang Panginoon Diyos. Kaya sinasabi yan in the next slide, and so what is being represented here is when he says, yung sinabi ni Pablo, who answers back to God? That really means who snaps back at God? Who pushes back? Who calls God into account? Who demands answers from God? Who questions God and even passes judgment on God? 
Kaya sabi ng verse 20, the thing molded will not say to the molder, yung hinuhubog, hindi niya sabihin sa hinuhubog, why did you make me like this? Will it? So in essence, sinasabi ni Paul, kayo, you just trust the line with God. Your arrogance, your arrogance is just below the belt. You have gone too far. So, mas sobrang ang inyong pagka-challenge sa Diyos. That is already defiance. Parang sinasabi nyo, ito ba, Diyos, God, is this fair? Is this just? Ito ba ay tama? How in the world can you still hold us accountable when you are the one who is making all the choices? all the preferences and the judgment. So ito ay, itong katanungan na ito does not come from a humble heart. Does not come from a heart that is ready to listen and to accept wholeheartedly the truth that we will hear from God. Ang katanungan ito ay nagagaling po sa isang puso na ang tingin niya, mas matalino siya sa Diyos. Nanggagaling mo ito sa isang puso na akala niya, God is the one to give an account to Him and to all those who are in disagreement with them. Ang tingin mo nila rito ay parang sinasabpinan nila ang Diyos, dadaling nila sa korte, ipaupo nila sa, sa witness stand, ikapras examin nila ang Diyos, at dahil akala nila, God is on trial. God is not on trial here. Man is on trial and under trial and we saw that in Romans 1, Romans 2, Romans 3. Napag-aralan na po natin. We are on trial here. We are all guilty of falling short of the glory of God. Pero ang tao ho, dahil sa kanyang pride, he tries to turn the tables against God and put God you know, on the witness stand at siya ang mag-aano mag-cross examine sa kanya at magdagdala ng mga witnesses to witness against God and bring down a verdict that God is guilty binabalik ka doon that has been that way ever since man fell into sin. Wala siyang kasalanan ang lahat ng blame sa Diyos. The same thing in the sovereign church. Alam niyo, when you read the book of Job, di ba alam mo natin na si Job, napaka-hirap ng kanyang mga pinagdaanan sa buhay. Parang wala yata pwede maka, makapantay o makalampas sa mga calamities na naranasan po na. Very, you know, very traumatic yung mga events na nangyari sa kanyang buhay. And during that time that he was in pain, alam niyo ho, he was tempted to accuse God na hindi niya pinapatakbo ng tama ang mundo. Yun na nasa utak ko ni Job eh. Lord, bukang this is all out of your hands already. You, you are not running the world properly and justly. So sa kanila mong kalikan, the Lord answered Job out of the storm. And He said in Job 38, 1-4, Then the Lord answered Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that darkens my counsel with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you. And you shall answer me. Ito yung tanong ng Diyos sa kanya. Where were you? Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Kaya ho, dito makikita natin na hindi naman ho insensitive ang Diyos sa pain ni Job. He was compassionate with him. Ngunit pinaaalala lang ho niya sa kanya na hindi siya Diyos. Si Job ay hindi Diyos. Siya ang Diyos. Siya ang meron eternal purposes. Kaya, 
Mahiya naman si John na siya pa ang nag-question sa kaparaan ng Diyos. Mahiya naman si John na siya pa ang nag-dedicta o nagka-counsel kung anong dapat gawin ng Diyos sa mundo at sa kanyang sariling buhay. Di hindi nga niya alam kung ano ang mga pinag-usapan ng Diyos at sa kanyang job niya. Pag-iusapan niya. Kaya kung Kaya kung isang malaking kahilihan sa harapan ng Diyos, kung nasabihin natin, Diyos, upo ka nga. Seserbo ng kita. Dahil hindi tama ang pagkapatakbo mo sa mundo. Hindi tama ang ginagawa mo sa aking buhay at sa buhay ng aking pamilya. Dapat ganito, dapat ganito. Parang sinabi mo na sa Diyos na tali tayo ng presto. May I be the Lord of the universe and then you, you be my subject. May mga verses so sa atin na magpapakita. Ngayon mo ay hindi tama. In the next slide, we look at Isaiah 45 beginning at verse 9. At sabi mo yan, Woe to the one who quarrels with his maker an earthenware vessel among the vessels of earth will the clay say to the potter what are you doing or the thing you are making say he has no hands the clay may not call into account the potter and say what are you doing what have you done in my life and what are you doing with everyone else so hindi mo tayo hihingi ng kasagutan sa Diyos God does not owe us I mean, an explanation. If He explains, hindi ko dahil sa that is an obligation. But that is just His prerogative. Next slide. Another verse, this time in Isaiah 64, verse 8. But now, O Lord, You are our Father, and we are the clay, and You are our Father, and all of us are the work of of your hand. Jeremiah 18, simula sa verse 1. The word which came to Jeremiah from the Lord saying, Arise and go down to the potter's house, and there I will announce my words to you. Then I went down to the potter's house, and there he was, making something on the wheel. Next uh, slide. But the vessel that he was making of clay was spoiled in the hand of the potter. So he remade it into another vessel as it pleased the father to me. And the word of the Lord came to me saying, Can I not, O house of Israel, deal with you as this father, as this father does, declares the Lord. Behold, like the clay in the father's hand, so are you in my hand, O house of Israel. So this passage is rendered all from the Old Testament tells us na meron pong right may karapatan ho ang gumagawa ng mga pottery na yan kung ano ang gusto niyang uri kung ano ang gusto niyang bubog kung ano ang gusto niyang itsura kung gaano kalaki kung gaano kaliit kung para sa ang dayunin yung mga gagawin niya, hindi pwedeng, ano mo, hindi pwedeng sabihin ng clay, bakit mo ko ginawang ganito? In the next slide, in verse 21, patuloy pang ibibigin dito ni Pablo yung karapatan ng Pablo to do whatever he wishes to the clay. Verse 21, sabi yan, or does not the father have a right? So we stop there first. Yung salitang right dito is a Greek word that means supreme authority over others. It means the power of choice. It means the liberty to do as one pleases. So, hindi siya gagawa ng mga consultatory team. They would not brainstorm ano ba ang dapat kong gawin. 
wala rin siya tulong advisor dahil kulang yung kanyang kaalaman hindi mo sa kanya uso yung oh, two heads are better than one wala rin siya siya God is the great and ultimate genius brother that's why he is the self sufficient God so we should never volunteer <laughs> we should never volunteer to be part of his body and advisory yan po ay isang kalapastanganan sa harapan ng Diyos He has the right the supreme authority without any without asking any permission from anyone kung anong gusto niyang gawin sa mundo kung anong gusto niyang gawin sa buhay ng bawat tao kung anong gusto niyang gawin even in the eternal welfare of humanity that is his pure and free choice the liberty to do as one pleases and in the next slide we can see in the second part of verse 21 sabi yan so he has the right to make from the same lump one vessel for honorable use now a vessel here is a broad term but it can be used of an object that is made by a pattern so pag sinabing honorable vessel that would be like a piece of pottery yung word na honorable is a Greek word that means valuable highly esteemed dahil po sa kanyang angkin na kagandahan and so this represents those whom God has chosen to save So, yung kagandahan po ng iglesia, ng church, ay hindi po dahil sa kanyang sarili. Dahil siya ay, ano, siya ay binubo ng Diyos. Out of that dirt, out of that smelly clay of His nature, siya ay pinunod ng Diyos, binihisan ng righteousness ng Panginoon Diyos. Kaya sa mata ng Panginoon, He is valuable. He is highly esteemed. Hindi ho again dahil sa kanyang mga nagawang mabuti, kaya unti-unting umanda ang kanyang itsura sa Diyos. Hindi mo. It is only because of what Christ has done for him or for her. This represents those whom God has chosen to see. In the next slide, you're still in verse 21. So sinasabi niyan, yung iba ho ay for honorable use yung iba naman for common use verse 21 pa rin yung word na common or dishonorable means unattractive unpolished and it means even wild and disgraceful and shameful ang ibig sabihin po niyan ay they are not at all special. They are just ordinary. At ang gamit sa kanila ay hindi yung isang bagay na ika nga eh, hindi display mo. Yung bago, yung bow, yung toilet. Kung saan mo tayo, you know, when, when there's a call of nature, yun mo ba ay naka naka display ko kayo sa salas ninyo para kayo bisista kayo kapag mga malaki ninyo hindi mo diba? kaya yung placement ng ating mga toilet ay hindi ko nakikita siya yung huling nakikita kapi kita lang yung paggagamit yung bisita ng panahon naman ito yung kanilang mga yung mga Masura ko nila, for example, are, you know, made of clay. So, yun ho yung mga kinoconsider ng mga common or mga dishonorable. They are unattractive. Hindi nyo pagkakaguluhan yan. Hindi nyo ipagmamalaki yan. Hindi nyo ipapolish yan. And so, ano yung software? It is disgraceful and shameful. Alam nyo ho, yun hong word dito na 
ginamit ko niya sa tablo ay actually meron din siyang uh, prefix na A letter A it's uh, in front of the word a comma in the Greek so it is actually a negative for example sa English language ng natin pag ikaw ay pumunta sa museum you know ay galing din mo yan sa basic word na news M-U-S-P so when you say I am about to news meaning say I am about to think at why nagbubunay-bunay nagbininay-ninay pinag-iisipan mo ang, kung ano ba ang kahalagahan ang, ang significance ang relevance ng mga bagay na iyong pinabasa o iyong pinakakinggan o nakikita So when you go to a museum, brethren, you are, you are uh, encouraged, brethren, to think over kung ano ba yung place niya sa history, ano ba ang magandang gamit niya, so on and so forth. So you ponder things in a museum. You look at the beautiful works of art in a museum and you think in a history. You know who you use. But when you put an A in front of the word amuse, and then tuktukan mo yan ang word na meant, magiging amusement. So when you go to an amusement park, it is now an activity where parang ina-unplug mo yung brain mo, hindi ka na masyado nag-iisip, or hindi ka na talaga nag-iisip, because you just enjoy yung mga bagay na nandun. So, you go to Enchanted Kingdom, for example, and, oh, tagal ko lang hindi nakapunta rin. Kahit sa palang yata yung anak ko, nung huli kami nakapunta rin. Ano kaya yung sila? So, when you go to Enchanted Kingdom, E.K., I, you go there with, you know, excitement, anticipation, dahil gusto mo, my experience, yung thrill ng mga rides niya. Diba? and you're not really so much thinking pag ikaw ba'y nakasakay doon ikaw ba'y nagbubulay-bulay ha? paano kaya ginawa ito mga ginawa ito ano kaya materialis ang ginamit dito sa kaya nag-aral yung mga taong nag-engineer ng mga sakit wala ka nang pakaya na sa mga yan kasi sakay ka na lang for the thrill of your life to enjoy everything kaya ang amusement it is the lowest level of activity because it does not require being profound does not require intelligence brethren all you need to do is just to be submitted to whatever entertainment na magagawa mo sa mga bagay mo kaya ang mga tao mo sabi sila ng ano ba hindi? Ano ba sino? Pag tulog into the social media to tell everything or to watch the sports Again, we're not saying that these things are wrong in themselves Pero, di mo kasi yung pinakamadaling doon Kaya, kami yung sabi ng isang teologya it is the lowest level of activity That's why It's no wonder when you go into all churches, including in our church, ginanangaw mo yung library. Bakit? Kasi pag mata ka ng library, pinakailangan mo ano? Pag-aral. Pinakailangan mo ano? Tignan kung ano yung mga tinuturo mo. Maging student of God's word and Of course, yung mga libro are very helpful para masama mo natin paunawaan ang Christian life. Pero wala akong gumagawa. Kasi ho, yun na ho ang problema ng tao na yun. We just want to be entertained. We don't want much activity going on in our brains. Ano ho? And we just want to feel good about ourselves. So in the next slide, those that are a common vessel or dishonorable vessel 
are those whom God has chosen to pass over from setting His grace and mercy upon them. And He leaves them in their sinful, filthy, dirty state, but He has a purpose for them as well. Lahat naman mo ng ginagawa ng Diyos, whether bagay, whether kanikasan o tao, may layo din ang Diyos. So they are not totally useless. Proverbs 16, verse 4 says, God has made everything for His own purpose. Even what? The wicked for the day of evil. Kaya ko, in our next point, we can now see here the rejected. Verse 22. At ano ang sinasabi sa atin ng verse 22? It says, What if God desiring to show His wrath and to make known His power has endured with much patience best sense of wrath prepared for best sense of sorry yeah best sense of wrath prepared for destruction so ito ho yung layunin ng Diyos sa mga tao ho na kanyang pinasomeran yung mga taong kanyang reject yung mga vessels na ginawa lang niyang common ginawa ko niyang just leaving them in their state in natural state of birth and commonality He chooses for them to be, to be simply left in their natural birth state God will put certain attributes on display in them that will reflect His glory. So meaning to say, God will still be glorified in them. They will reflect the character of God. Next slide. Sasalaminin pa rin nila ano, ang character ng Diyos. At meron kong tatlo yan. No? Una yung kanyang wrath, ang alawa yung kanyang kakangyarihan, pangatlo yung kanyang patience, sa isa rin mo natin yan. Yung kanyang wrath, next slide, the, this wrath is His fierce, righteous, holy indication and anger that is unleashed rightfully so upon them. Yung word na wrath, ano ano, binang kaalala lang, is a Greek word na kung saan yung Greek word na yun, orge, from which we derive the English word orgy. That means heated passion. So ito ay tungkol sa violente na emosyon ng Diyos laban no? sa mga hindi ligtas. So ang Diyos so ay hindi parang you know, parang pasig lang na stoic yung kanyang tsura. Hindi mo. God is passionate in His wrath towards the ungodly. How passionate He was in the Old Testament, He destroyed the whole world by flood. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. And many other instances that God has to judge many people. Yan mo yung wrath ng Diyos. And we have been introduced in that word in Romans 1, 18. For the wrath of God has been what? Has been revealed. Ibig sabihin, active. Actively brethren God judging and condemning people. Presently, and of course, it may also happen ultimately and consumably in hell. Yan mo yung buot ng Diyos. And then second, the power, next slide, refers to His power to dumb them. So ito na mo yung ano, ha? yung talagang kapangyarihan ng Diyos na sila ay ano na para sana walang makapitigil walang pwedeng ikang tao na pwede mong pakiusapan baka naman malakas ka sa Diyos baka naman pwedeng sabihin mo sa kanya ay maging mabangit lang sa akin huwag naman akong saktan o para sana 
tayo na i-reject ko siya. No, brother, no one can work, no one can restrain his power. And of course, we have the attribute of patience. And God for so long endures the rebellion and the unbelief and the sinfulness and the blasphemy ng mga tao po na kung saan sorry, minagalaw lang po ang tulong back to me the unbelief and the sinfulness and the blasphemy and the cursing and the swearing that the patience of God is sin that God will allow this to go on as long as He does you remember yung sinabi mo ng Romans kindly uh, turn with me to Romans chapter 2 verse 4 ang sabi mo yan ni Pablo or do you presume on the riches of His kindness and forbearance and patience not knowing that God's kindness is meant to lead, to lead you to repentance but because of your hard and impenitent heart you are storing up what? the second time you know the word na wrath you are storing up wrath for yourself on the day of wrath third time when God's righteous judgment will be with you Okay, ang Diyos ay magpapagpasensya. Pero yung kanyang kindness po must not be abuse. Hindi ko kinakailangan mong itulat ko po hanggang sa pagkatignan ko ako, hanggang sa anak mo kitiisin ng Diyos. We should not ignore yung long-suffering ng Panginoon. First, God is long-suffering. God is patient. Can you imagine for three and a half years, alam niya na si Judas ang magbudas sa kanya. Pero hinayaan lang niya. Di ba? Hinugas ang pangano. Yung pahanilitas. Pero of course, hindi naligtas. O hindi naligtas si Judas. Nag-prolong na yung kanyang punishment. And in the Old Testament, yan po ang lesson. Nagihintay, nagihintay, nagihintay ang Diyos very patiently na ang taong ay magsisi. Ngunit, hindi ko niya dinedelay ang mga bagay. God always acts on His own calendar. Kaya ho, pag dumating na ho yung araw ng reckoning or accounting, wala na ho magagawa ang tao. Wala na akong records. Kaya ho, ang lesson ngayon sa sangkatauhan ay magsisi kayo sa inyong kasalanan habang may oras pa. At habang nandiyan pa yung grace period na binibigay ng Diyos sa atin. That He is enduring our sin, being reconciled to God, not tomorrow, but today. Let us embrace the forgiveness only available to Jesus Christ. There's no other recourse, brethren, para matakbuhan mo ang puot ko. Let God's patience and kindness, as Paul says in Romans 2.4, lead every person to repentance. In our next point, we see in verse 23, the redemption. Sabi in order to make known, next slide, the riches of His glory for vessels of mercy which He has prepared beforehand for glory. We see here again, brethren, yung po word na mercy. Alam niyo ho, ang Romans 9, ang tingho niya, mercy. Mercy ho. I think this is the fifth time na sinabi na ko ito ni Paul. Let's just try to look at every word na mercy in chapter 9. Una-una ko, makikita natin yan in Romans chapter 9 verse 15. 
For he says to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I have compassion. Verse 16, So then it depends not on human will or exertion, but on God who has mercy. So ayun na naman po yan. Verse 18, So then he has mercy on whomever he wills, and he hardens whomever he wills. And then verse 23, we can see now here the word mercy again. Pang limang beses, in order to make known the riches of His glory or vessels of mercy which He has prepared beforehand for glory. Ang ganda ko ng paliwanan dito ni Steve Lawson sa next slide, makikita ko natin niya. Ang sabi niya, the saving grace and the saving mercy that is bestowed upon vessels of honor shines all the more brightly and is magnified and is seen to be all the more glorious when it is compared to this trash can, when it is compared to this toilet bowl. If there was no toilet bowl and if there was no trash can, the beautiful china, the beautifully painted vase would not seem to be as pretty until it is compared to the ugliness and the foulness of the vessel of this earth. Ito ho yung genius genius. The chief architect friend. The master drawer and artist. Yan ho ang Diyos. Paano yung malalaman isang bagay na maganda? Kung wala ang isang bagay na pangit. Tama ko ba yan? Paano mga sabi ng isang bagay ay isang bagay ay expensive? Kung wala ang isang bagay na cheap. Paano malalaman ng isang bagay na magbuti? Kung wala ang isang bagay na magbuti. There must be a contest. There must be a clear comparison. There must be something that is opposite of another thing. Para masabi ko natin na talagang yan ay kakahanga-hanga. Yan ay magbuti. Yan ay for honorable use because there is something that is a total opposite of that which is lovely and upright and beautiful and excellent and good. Gawa ko ng isyo. And we cannot fault God sa kanyang ginagawa because He is the Father. He is the Maker on the human. And we were not with Him and we were not co-creators of God nung Kanyang nilikha ang mga. Tayo ay Kanyang mga nilikha lang and we are just, you know, just be very thankful na tayo ay Kanyang tinawag. Tayo ay Kanyang nilikha. At tayo ay hindi niya hinayaan na manatiling mabaho, na manatiling sandlak sa kasalanan, na manatili na nasa, ano, na nasa ilalim ng puot ng kanyang banal na kamay, hindi mo na hindi na. Kaya ho, yung glory na yun na binamanggit sa Romans 9.23, and we look at the next slide, the glory here refers to all of the attributes of God, the sum and the substance of all who God is, and for it to be the riches of His glory. Kaya ho, ikakita ho yun. Ikakita ho yung comparison ho ni Moses kay Kino. Si Moses ho, nandun ho yung paano ho binago ng Diyos. Ang buhay ng isang tao mayabang, mataas ang tingin sa kanyang sarili, kung paano ho naging mapagpakumbaba si Moses. At dahil po roon ay tinakita ng Diyos ang kanyang righteousness ang kanyang kabananan sa buhay ng Diyos. And we can only really appreciate that when God would make another stark contrast sa kanyang ginawa sa buhay ni Moses at sino ho yung kanimbawa na yun? Si Pero. Na si Pero ho, ikas ang puso, si Pero ho, na natiling gipayan, mayabang sa harapan ng Diyos, makasalanan, 
Patigas ang ulo, hardened heart. And God allowed him to be in that state. Remember, pag-aralan mo natin na Sunday, hindi mo naglagay ng kasalanan ng Diyos sa ito. Even in his mother's womb, he was already a sinner. Di ba yung din sinabi ni David sa kanyang sarili? Or I must conceive in my mother's womb as God. May simple mo. So hindi mo responsible ang Diyos sa kasalanan ni David. In fact, some people would say na bakit kasi nagkasala si Adam sa kasalanan mo? Di sana wala akong kasalanan ngayon. Well, that is presumption. And that can never happen. Sabihin na lang natin na hindi hindi nagkaroon ng pag-transfer. Hindi mo na inherit yung kasalanan ni Adam sa katilema. Halimbawa na lang, just for the sake of discussion. But, your track record from the day you were born until the present time will show that you are guilty of rebellion and sin against your faith. So in that case, even in the eyes of God, makasalanan ka pa. And we all deserve judgment. We are all guilty. We deserve God. So whether God would create holy vessels and vessels of honor or create common vessels or vessels of dishonor lahat ng attribute ng Diyos will be seen nakikita mo in conclusion verse 24 next slide says even as whom he has told not from the Jews not from the Jews only but also from the Gentiles. Sabi ko ni Davis Curtis. Next slide. The vessels of mercy are us. So referring to the word us in verse 24. Paul and the first century believers, okay, sila ko yung us. It is the us whom he also called. Remember the word called was uh, referred to by Paul in Romans 8.30 Those who gave for you He also what? Called Tinawag Believers are the called of all nations God's covenant promise finds its fulfillment not in Abraham's physical seed but in the called the elect of all nations The remnant we will see that word remnant later on in Romans 9. God extended His mercy in order to bring about a single covenant community, Jews and Gentiles, in one family, made up of believing Jews and believing Gentiles. Kasi nasabi ni Paul, hindi yung physical descendant, hindi yung protect pinanganak ka, na hudyo, ay ikaw ay pinili or antik ng Panginoon. He will have mercy on whom He will have mercy. Finally, quoting Leon Morris last night, the Jews were inclined to think that God could not make them anything other than vessels of honor. Yun mo yung kanilang prideful arrogance. But Paul rejects this view and points out that God does what He does. In closing, let me just say, brethren, not who tayo, deserve who natin na maging toilet bowls. Not who tayo, deserve natin maging mga trash cuts na. Not who tayo, deserve natin na maging Iwanan tayo ng Diyos in our state of hardened heart. A hardened piece of dirt para i-showcase lamang yung galit ng Diyos at yung kanyang face. 
Pero alam nyo, sa mga kadahilanan na ang Diyos na lang mga nakakalang ay inalis niya yung velo at yung spiritual blindness niya natin para makita ko natin a glimpse of God's glory and open up our minds to understand the gospel. These things, brethren, we do not deserve at all. Kaya nga ho, mahalaga na every day, araw-araw ho, we should be reminded na sino ang Diyos, kung ano yung binigay niya sa atin na we do not deserve at all, we should drop on our knees, brethren. And we should say, Lord, maraming salamat po. Ako ay tinawag niyo at ako ay inyong pinigit. At ako ay inyong pinalis sa aking maturan na kalanagayan. Our hearts must be thankful, friends, because we know that it is only because of this wonderful mercy na tayo po ay nasa pili ng Panginoon. Again, all the reasons mo ito ba? Bakit mo tayo pinili? Tayo ay manalangin at inatawag natin ang ating mga sarili at the Lord's table. Father in heaven, we glorify and praise you. 